All right, let a couple more people trickle in. All right, then. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to our second Breathe and Learn. Uh, my name is Steve. I'm in business development at MJS BioLinks. And uh, today we just want to take 15 minutes of your time to uh, show you a really exciting new instrument that uh, it's called the Two Brighter 360. It is now available in Canada exclusively through MJS BioLinks. We have Bud Duong here from Two Brighter to give us a quick demonstration and show you just how you can increase the efficiency in your lab and eliminate the amount of time you spent dealing with messy handwriting or, or those stick on labels on all your labware. Now, a couple of things before we jump into the demo. Uh, first, this is being recorded right now and we'll be able to send it to you right after the session is over. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat down below. Or if you want to ask them aloud, if you have a more elaborate question, you can just use the raise hand function on the bottom bar. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to answer them on the fly. But if we don't get to them, then uh, we have a 15 minute Q&A session right after the demonstration. And lastly, just out of courtesy to everyone on the call, I'm going to mute all of you. But uh, feel free if you have a question to unmute yourself and, and ask away. And with that, I'm going to pass it along to Bud, who will start this demo. Perfect. Hi, everybody. I'm Bud from Two Brighter. Really appreciate everybody for taking the time to, to view this. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. And like uh, Steve said, ask a lot of questions. And uh, without further ado, we'll get into it. So I'm going to go ahead and start the a short presentation, just about five, six minutes, just to give you a little bit of background. Then we'll show you the software for a few minutes, and then we'll print tubes live with your name on them so and you'll see that happen live and then uh like we'll say we'll wrap up with q a after and just to add before you jump in bud i'll just say if you want to keep bud blown up on the screen if you go to the top uh, right corner of his screen and, and click the uh, three little dots, you'll be able to pin them to keep his face lovely and blown up for the throughout the demo. Perfect. All right. So just one real quick. I'm sure a lot of people uh, probably haven't heard of us, but we've actually been around for a while. We've been around since 2005. And our mission in life is to save people the pain and suffering of applying adhesive labels or looking at messy handwriting, either their own or their colleagues. So that's what direct printing solutions for the life sciences mean. We're here to eliminate the adhesive label and messy handwriting. And actually we've been around since 2005 and our original product simply automated the movement of a lab marker. It would make every stroke of every character just like your hand would, uh, except neater, faster, and more reliably. But as good as that product was, uh, people wanted two main improvements to that product, something that was much faster and something that had the resolution to print linear and 2D barcodes. So that's why we introduced this Two Rider 360 inkjet system in late 2010, early 2011. I'm gonna read a brief user review from somebody, from one of our first customers in Pfizer La Jolla to a colleague considering the system in Pfizer Cambridge. So I won't read it all, but just a few uh, excerpts that I particularly like are, Paul, as advertised, it prints tubes like crazy. Time saved immeasurable, boilable, freezable, and ethanol and isopropyl resistant. To stick it, last week I had to freeze 10 plus cell lines and they did 300 plus cravals printed. To sticker these makes my hand go numb after about 50 tubes and handwriting them is out of the question. With the tube writer, it took me less than 10 minutes to print them all. Adoption progressed from skeptical to reluctant to get out of my way, I'm next. So uh, while all of our reviews may not be this enthusiastic, uh, I'm sure a lot of people uh, don't like labeling tubes, 
I'm pretty sure that's why a lot of you uh, are on this call to begin with. So looking for a better way. Uh, and we do get reviews not uh, like this almost on a weekly basis. Maybe not this enthusiastic, but close. So well, why makes the Tube Rider 360 a little different and why the Tube Rider 360? Uh, the biggest reason why people get our system is it is by far the fastest. Uh, we, and we'll demonstrate that in real time. The second point and big benefit of the system, it is by far the most flexible. So, and we'll demonstrate that and elaborate on that as well. And then you, by eliminating the adhesive label, you eliminate a lot of problems associated with it. So, uh, and if you look at where the product sits in the marketplace, you know, it's like I said, by far the fastest, by far the most flexible. But it, in terms of pricing, it's in between. It's obviously more than an adhesive uh, label maker, you know, Brother, Brady, et cetera. But it's not as crazy as the fully automated stuff where it's picking tubes out of a bin and things like that. So we're right in between. It's a semi-automated system, but has some major benefits and works well for a lot of our customers. The nice thing about the product is there are only four features of the product and they can be summed up in one sentence. The Tube Rider 360 directly prints using an industrial inkjet on any tube from Excel. So I'm just gonna touch upon uh, the benefits of each of those features. By directly printing on the tube, you eliminate the problems associated with uh, the thickness of a label, like jamming in a centrifuge or a box or something like that. But probably even the bigger benefit why people like the direct printing is that you get superior durability at minus 80 and liquid nitrogen. So I think everybody's had a label fall off, you know, or come back to a freezer and the label somewhere on, on the freezer, but not on the tube. So that's what you see there in that uh, tube kind of in the middle of the screen. That's a tube that was in the NIH biorepository in liquid nitrogen for four years. This particular lab was one of the first uh, users of our system. They've had the system since 2011 and have had uh, cryogenic files in the liquid nitrogen since then. And they've been printing 80 to 100,000 crab vials a year. So they're almost up to a million tubes printed with a tube writer. The second part is we're using an industrial inkjet. This is what they use in a Coke assembly line to print lot numbers and expiration dates on Coke cans and beer bottles. So the technology is extremely fast. With the tube writer system, you can expect to print between 1,000 to 2,500 tubes per hour. And if you compare that to hand applying adhesive labels or manually writing on tubes, that's an 80% reduction. So what used to take an hour goes down to about 10 to 15 minutes and a much more pleasant 10 to 15 minutes of that because you're not using the small muscles of your fingers to apply labels or hand write on tubes. So, and obviously this uh, inkjet technology is very robust. The consumable costs are very low. Most of our customers spend between $500 to $1,000 annually, not per month, not per week, annually on consumables. Uh, and so that's the benefits of this industrial inkjet technology. And probably the last feature of the industrial inkjet technology is that it is non-contact. I'll demonstrate this during the, the, the live demonstration, but by being non-contact, we're simply spraying the tubes as they pass by and that gives us the ability to print onto anything. And that's shown uh, if you look at the tubes in this slide. We can print on 0.2 mil PCR strips. You'll see that in the bottom here. You can even print on histology cassettes, 50 mil conicals, everything in between. And while it may seem probably trivial, uh, we're the only system that can print on the caps of tubes. So here's obviously on the caps of microcentrifuge tubes, gets done all the time. But even if you want to get a little bit crazier, you see in the bottom right, we're printing in the recess cap of a cryogenic file. So really any tube, uh, any tube uh, that you can imagine, even Petri dish, T75 flasks, you name it. You know, it's actually funny. I do a lot of these demonstrations and I say, we can print onto anything. And then you know what the next question typically is? well, bud, can you print on X? <laughs> you know, uh, the answer is generally yes. Uh, I saw a lot of the kind of labware and questions that came in beforehand, uh, ranging from glass 
to 12 by 75 tubes to cryobile inserts? Yes, yes, and yes. So, and I'll, uh, and I'll demonstrate that uh, during the live video. Okay. All right. And at this point, that's enough uh, of me talking and it's time for me to show you how things work. But this just gives you uh, kind of the equipment picture of how it's set up. This is the industrial inkjet in the middle I was talking about. And then this is what we call the print station that moves around the tubes. And you'll see all that live in just, just a second. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by, uh, by showing the, the software first. So I'm gonna stop the presentation here and just switch to another screen. All right. Can you see the Excel spreadsheet? Great. All right. So the Excel spreadsheet uh, is very straightforward. I just opened this up right before we started. So it's just called book two. There's no add-ins or macros or anything like that, just your native Excel. Column A simply represents the print position in the rack you'd like to print. Uh, so it's not printed, it just specifies where in the rack to print. And this will make more sense once I switch to the live video. After that, every row is a separate tube and every column is a printing line on the tube. So B1 is the first printing line of the first tube, C1 is the second printing line of the first tube, and D1 is the third printing line of the first tube. So, okay. The other nice thing is you can use formulas as fun and functions like you normally do to minimize the data entry. So here I'm just going to put two brighter on every tube along with your name and company. And this is something you might use to, uh, you know, for aliquoting uh, reagents or primers or something like that. So you might say protonase K and then you could have all your aliquots of protonase K. And of course you can serialize by just uh, using the Excel formulas as well. Okay, so after you have your Excel, set, Excel spreadsheet set up, you simply press load spreadsheet and it loads the active worksheet of the active Excel file. So you see that it has Isabel as the last two and then it has Jody as the first two. And it pulled in 37 tubes from the active Excel spreadsheet. There's a pull down where you can select which tube like picking paper and a printer. And in the beginning we have a familiar name, side two mil cryovial, and then we have the part number of the rack or the adapter for printing on that particular tube. And you'll see there's just a simple sticker on uh, the rack, and we'll show that in the live video. Okay. After that, the only thing left to do is to press printing tubes. That's really it. So I won't hit it now. We'll switch to the live video so you can see that. And then we're going to print on, do a few different printings. We're going to print on the side of a two mil cryovial. We're going to print on the top of a microcentrifuge with a 2D data matrix barcode. And then we're going to print on a 15 mil conical and 16 by 100 glass tubes as well. And all that's happening when I'm doing those things is I'm choosing a different spreadsheet that I set up for printing on those things. And like I said, you hit load spreadsheet and it loads that active worksheet. Then I'm selecting the appropriate selection from the pull down menu and then just hitting print. So we won't show that every time just to save you, uh, you know, that pain and suffering between going through the screen share and the live video, but that's what's happening when we're switching tubes on the software side. Okay, now to the fun part. So I'm gonna stop the screen share. And I'm gonna switch to the live video. Okay. Okay, so here you're kind of getting the close up of, of the print station. And I'm just going to show you how to load a rack of tubes with, with the tubes. So here's our rack for printing the tubes. And something that you'll notice, let me give myself a little more room. Something that you'll notice is that it holds the tubes in a V shaped slot. 
The nice thing about a V-shaped slot is it allows you to put multiple tube types even in the same rack. So here, the same rack can print on an HPLC vial, uh, Micronic or Matrix or FluidX style tube, or even a screw cap tube. But here we have the rest of the two mil cryogenic vials. As you can see, there's a label that has the two positions on the rack, one, two, three, four, five. It goes, starts in the upper left and goes across like a book. So that's why 10 is below it. The other thing you'll notice is that there's a larger hole and a smaller slot for putting the rack on. And that just corresponds to this larger pin and smaller pin. Okay. So I'm simply gonna drop the rack onto those pins and then it's ready to go. At this point, I'm just gonna hit print tubes. And the system resets itself before every print. And right as the tube goes underneath the print head, it prints a tube. First tube's done, second tube's done, third tube's done, fourth tube's done, fifth tube's done. We have 37 here, but uh, the whole rack of 50 would take 90 seconds. So to do all 37 tubes, it will take a little bit more than a minute. A good rule of thumb for the smaller tubes is about two seconds a tube, right? And then hopefully uh, you can see how we cut down the time by 80%. Typically we see uh, when people hand apply labels, it's at the rate of about, uh, it's at the rate of about uh, 300 tubes per hour with a tube writer it's typically between 12 to 1500 tubes per hour. What typically what is happening is while one rack is printing, the user has a second rack and they're able to load that. So when it's finished, they can simply swap them out. So just that quickly, we printed all 37 tubes and I'll show you a few of those tubes up close. As you can see, the ink dries instantly to the touch. For full alcohol resistance to kick in, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes, but for normal handling, and oftentimes, even if you're using 70% alcohol, it's totally fine. Okay, so now we're just gonna move on and show you how quickly we can switch to printing on a different kind of tube. So I'm gonna remove the rack. To switch between printing on different tube types, you simply loosen the screw that holds in the print head. You loosen it, you raise it up more than you need to. And in this case, I'm gonna print on the cap of a microcentrifuge tube. And here's our rack, just uh, what you would expect, a series of holes that holds the tubes precisely. Then I'm going to drop the rack on, just like I did before. And here we have a simple but effective mechanism to get the print head to the correct height. It's simply a six, meter, six millimeter block of plastic, nothing special, that we put right on the tubes. We loosen the screw. We touch that block. And then when you remove it, you're at the correct height. So that this is how we set the roughly six millimeter quarter inch height above the printing surface. Okay. At this point, like I said, I'm simply going to change the spreadsheet and load that, change the pull down menu in the, uh, change the pull down menu in the media selection. And then I'm going to press print. So the nice thing here is that you saw within about 30 seconds, a minute, that you can switch between two very different tube types, you know, the side of a cryovial to the top of a microcentrifuge. And as you'll see soon, this is where we're printing on 
a 2D barcode with some of your names encoded in this 2D barcode. So we're on to the second row, just going through and, and printing. You know. I often do these demonstrations, and uh, if I only print a few tubes, and it finishes them very quickly, people say, when's it going to print them? And then I say, it already printed them. <laughs> you know, they don't believe it's uh, so fast. So. But we have a question that just popped up here. Sure. Does the system come with all different rack types? Well, I'll answer that in just one second. Let me show that this printed too. So this has Max's name printed as a 2D barcode, right? And let me show this in a little bit more detail. Is that I am going to switch cameras here for just a second. Just to show how this uh, Max's name got encoded as a 2D barcode. So to do that, I'm going to go to Oh, so this is a good example of the non-contact printing. You can see that the print head is literally that six millimeters away and simply uh, spraying the ink right onto it. Okay. The other thing I'm going to show here might be a little difficult, but I'm going to scan this too. And then I'll show this in a second. But as you can see the cursor right here, I'm scanning that tube with Max's name on it and the 2D barcode. And then you can see Max's name is output right there. So we simply put Max's name in the Excel spreadsheet, and we handled the conversion to a 2D barcode. And then simply by scanning the tube, it decodes that 2D barcode um, and converts it back to his name in alphanumeric text. Okay. Okay. So back to uh, the question that was asked. Uh, the system comes with six racks of your choice. So uh, we have a list and that you can choose from. The other thing that you can do is just send us your tubes and we'll figure it out for you. Or you can just send us the manufacturers and part numbers. And in most cases, we can just even figure out from that. Uh, we also have the ability to make uh, custom racks uh, in case we do see an unusual piece of labware. And let me give you a couple examples of that. I think somebody had uh, inquired about printing on cryobile inserts. So might be a little tough to see, but here's an example of the rack for printing on cryobile inserts. So I can get this. And then this insert would simply go into the cap of the cryogenic bar. And that's a great way to add 2D barcoding to samples that are already frozen. I know you don't want to freeze thaw them because uh, obviously the sample would degrade, but you can simply print on the inserts and plug them into the caps and that's a great way to go. Okay. I'm gonna just print uh, one more printing. And we're gonna print on a 15 mil conical, but we're also gonna print on glass tubes, right? Even in the same rack. I know some people had asked about, can you print on 15 mil conicals and 50 mil conicals? Yes, as well as glass vials. So I thought I'd kill uh, two birds with one stone here. I'm gonna drop the rack into the, onto the print station, lower the print head again. Then again, I'm going to our software. 
and then just choosing that selection to print on 15 mil conicals. Again, homes itself. And here we're printing in our largest font size. So just to show you uh, from our smaller font sizes, a barcode, and now if you wanted to print, you know, kind of in our giant font. This is something you might use for printing on a freezer box. You know, we do have customers who do that. And I would say those customers probably don't even buy a fixture. You can simply place the rack onto the print platform. There's so much room and it'll just spray uh, the ink right on there. And we're printing on the bare glass. This uh, particular glass tube has a white pat printing patch on the other side, but I knew people might have been interested uh, to print, see what it looks like on the bare glass. We have another question as well. Another couple of questions, bud. Yeah. Um, one is, can you print on a frozen tube? Ah, <laughs> you know, I, I wish we could. Uh, you know, it's technically possible to print on, short answer is no. Uh, it's technically possible to print on cold items. Uh, but the practical issue is the condensation and ice that tends to develop and smear the, the ink that's being printed. So that's why we do uh, recommend the insert uh, option if that's available. But yeah, in most cases, that's not, not possible. All right, thank you for your question. And then one from Amber, approximately how many tubes will be printed for each ink cartridge? Yeah, a good rule. It depends a little bit up on use, uh, but it could be, and it depends upon what you're printing, but, let, but the shorter answer is it's extremely cheap. It could be anywhere from 10,000 tubes to even up to 200,000 tubes, uh, but it really depends on your usage. A good rule of thumb is about one tenth of a cent to half a cent uh, per print. So 0.001 to 0.005. And as I mentioned, that 500 to 1,000 uh, dollars per year is a, is a good rough estimate. Alrighty. Thank you, Amber. Uh, another question, uh, how much is it for an ink cartridge? Yeah, um, it's typically around 300 to 325, so. Alrighty, and last one in the chat right now is what maintenance activity is required for the tube writer? And uh, what's, the, what's the possibility of a mechanical fault? Sure, sure. Uh, let's see. So uh, let me cover What's the best way? Let me do this. Well, the, the user maintenance that's required is about three minutes per week. And it breaks down to the following three things. One is uh, changing the cartridges out as necessary. And let me just show that. Here's the industrial inkjet that's sitting below the table. And here you can see that there are indicators, uh, it's a little bit tough to see, let me get there, that show how much of each. It says 80%, 80% of uh, the two cartridges. Right. To change those out, they simply get removed very straightforward, just like a bigger version of your home inkjet printer. Okay. Some people may be wondering. Um, some people may be wondering, wondering why are there two cartridges? One is a concentrate, and the other is a diluent. Yep. And uh, I so just saw a question pop up: uh, Can we print in different colors? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, you, the only color available is black. Uh, the way this works is very similar to a flow cytometer, and that relates to one of the points of maintenance, uh, in that it's microfluidic. So one of the other requirements of the maintenance is to either use it, which we would expect most of you to, to do if you purchase the system, uh, every one to two weeks. But if you happen to be in a lull period, you would simply press a button, and actually I can show it here. 
press the button right here to circulate uh, the ink. And that prevents any kind of clogging, uh, of clogging that may happen in the lines or the valves. So those are the two parts of user maintenance, change the cartridges, either use it or run it every one to two weeks. Then the third part, I'm gonna demonstrate here. is the cleaning of this printhead. You simply remove it from its sleeve. And then you can imagine over time, there could be some ink that builds up in this printhead. So you would simply rinse it using a squirt bottle, catch the runoff in a beaker, and you'd probably rinse it for about 30 seconds to a minute. And then you would just let it air dry for a minute. You're using a solvent that's pretty similar in acid, similar to acetone. So you would probably dispose of it uh, the same way you, did, you dispose of acetone, probably, probably in your solvent waste. But those are the three uh, parts of maintenance, are the changing the cartridges, running it every one to two weeks uh, if you're not using it. But if you're using it, that takes care of it. And then doing that printhead cleaning every one to two weeks is pretty much as needed uh, depending on your use of the system. Great. One more question. Can you use it on a slide? Absolutely. Let me actually just grab the, uh, the adapter for a slide just to show you what that looks like. Here's the adapter for the slide. I don't have a slide handy, but the slides sit in each slot here. And if you're asking about slides, I can imagine the next question might be, can you print on a histology cassette? Oftentimes, those go hand in hand. So let me show you the adapter for that. It holds the cassette at an angle so that front face is presented flat to the, the printer. All right, that's, are there any other questions right now? Oh, oh got one. somebody asked about mechanical faults and, and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, let's see, in terms of uh, maintenance and what fails and the most of the issues, uh, since it is microfluidic, but if you do the user maintenance, you have see very few issues. But hey, you know, no system is perfect and any system can have fault, uh, can have issues. 90% uh, plus of the issues are with the inkjet, some form of clogging or potential misalignment of that ink stream. In terms of the mechanical uh, kind of the platform, we see very few issues with the system. Uh, I would say 90 to 95% of our customers over, and this is over the 10 year period the product's been out, uh, have never had an issue. Uh, the good news is for the inkjet is that there is on-site service in Canada provided uh, for that component. So, so very unlikely to have an issue, a mechanical issue. Uh, most of the issues that do arise uh, are related to the microfluidics and some some kind of clogging. Uh, but we have had systems out for a long time, and if you do the user maintenance, they run very reliably. And uh, yeah, and we can provide references uh, to attest to that. Alrighty, is there another, is there a base model price was the next question? I think that's a BioLinks question. <laughs> uh, Tanya, do you wanna take that one? Yeah, sure, Steve. Um, for base model pricing, you can find the pricing on our website. I just posted it in the chat box, but feel free to uh, contact, contact us directly for uh, a quote also. So right now, our base model price on our website is uh, just over 58,000 Canadian dollars. And 
warranty is one year, bud? Yes, that is correct. Right. Yep, and it covers the entire system. And just let me, uh, just so we have that view of, now we're talking uh, what the system includes and things like that, I'll switch cameras here. So the system does come with, as I mentioned, the six racks of your choice. It comes with all the hardware uh, that we mentioned, this print station up here, the industrial inkjet below. It does come with an initial quantity of the, the ink concentrate and the diluent. It should last you about three to six months. Uh, does come with uh, the software as well. The only thing we don't provide is a computer, but the good news is you can put it on as many computers as you'd like. So you can put it on multiple computers. There's no dongle. There's no uh, complicated licensing. You know, we, we consider it that you've done your job if you've purchased uh, the equipment. We're pretty easygoing uh, about the software. So, and, and the one-year warranty which does cover uh, the entire system. Okay. Perfect. Thank you everyone for your questions. I think there was one question that we did miss actually. Um, can we print in different colors? Uh, we can only print in black. Yeah. So good question. I wish I could say yes, but, uh, but black is the only color. But let me actually show you something that's kind of interesting. Um, and I just happened to have a tube from another demonstration handy. Oh, wrong camera. <laughs> so there's printing. I don't know how well you're able to see it, uh, but there's printing on an amber tube. So uh, it actually shows up uh, better than you than you might think. So, but certainly we could, you know, you wouldn't see it on a black tube. Perfect. So at this point, I think we'll, uh, I'll stop the video and we'll just wrap up uh, with a couple slides summarizing uh, the benefits. This is just a summary of what the package includes, as I mentioned. Uh, so you can see it here in writing. Uh, but just to summarize the benefits, as I mentioned, uh, the reason why people get it is just to save a ton of time. Uh, second reason is going to cut your consumable cost by 90%. Typically, we see uh, labels. Uh, costs anywhere from one to five cents. Here we're moving the decimal point over one spot, so 90% less there. Superior durability, don't, at extreme temperatures, don't have to worry about labels falling off at, in liquid nitrogen and boiling water. You're not gonna have ergonomic injuries associated with applying labels or handwriting on tubes. As you can see by the software is very straightforward to use, uh, given that you simply use Excel. And then, as you can see, we can really print onto, onto anything. Uh, and either with our current racks and that V-shaped slot design, or by even making custom racks, uh, where we do with that with 3D printing. So uh, the main take homes are the speed, the flexibility, and the ease of use, uh, I would say are tops among any instrument uh, for this. And just to know that you're in good company and. Uh, we've been selling the system for, for many years at this point. Uh, here's just a few of the major companies uh, using it. I know in Canada specifically, we have Repair Therapeutics. They're a newer company, uh, but I think they went public uh, about a year ago or something like that. ALS Global, they do environmental testing. We do have Ontario Forensics in the government. And then a, a newer company called Triumvira as well. So those are at least a handful of the Canadian customers, but certainly you know, Merck, Pfizer, Quest, Diagnostics, the USDA uh, have all had systems for, for many years at this point. All righty. Well, thank you everyone for taking the time today. 
And uh, thank you for your questions. If you're interested in learning more about the Tube Writer, if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one full length demo with Bud and your team, or you'd like a quote request or a sample request, please feel free to contact us by uh, website, email, or phone, and we'd be happy to help. And uh, with that being said, um, thank you for joining us today. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. And don't forget to check the mail for your little Timmy's card. All right, thank you everyone and have a great day.